Now, you know, if you look at what we typically do when you think about analyzing consumers, there's these models about how people are supposed to learn. These terrible, big, honky models. Now, the problem with these is that even if you memorize them, and even if you can remember them for more than a day, I mean, I've been teaching for 22 years, and I, I don't think I could even recreate that thing, OK? Because it's so easy to forget. And from my perspective, it's very, it doesn't help you do anything better. It doesn't help you be any more effective, or it doesn't help you be any more useful in doing things. So it's hard to remember. So remember what we talked about is we said, instead, the way we're going to approach this class is with, with this network model of consumer insights, where we start looking at essentially attributes, consequences, and values. And any time we try to figure out what's going on with somebody, we try to link those things up, because then we get the much deeper insights about what's going on. Now, <clears throat> in this particular case, which is taken from one of the papers, we've got the attributes at the bottom. The attributes relate to these consequences. So you say, well, gee, why do I like haagen -Dazs? Well, it's got an excellent flavor. Why is excellent flavor important to you? Well, it's sort of an affordable luxury. It's an indulgence. It's a way to reward myself. Why is rewarding yourself? important to you? Well, when I do that, I feel a sense of accomplishment. OK? Give you an idea. You, you want to just go ahead and take the assignments down to the office now? Yeah, that'd be great. And so this is what we want to aim at doing. Now, this isn't a very complex ladder. This is a complex ladder, OK? This is the thing we want to be aiming at. A lot of detail, because that's actually going to, that's what's going to make things really come alive. It's going to give you more to work with when you want to come up with these interventions. Now, <clears throat> if we end up looking at this network model, the difficulty of this network model versus trying to use, versus not using it, is that you really have to get your hands dirty. Now, we'll talk a little bit about your experience with laddering and what worked for you and what didn't work for you. But the problem with this is that it really entails you having to do something you're not very comfortable with. You have to sit down with somebody, and you have to ask them a lot of tough questions. And you have to say, I don't know if this line of reasoning is working OK, but I'm going to go down it. I don't know if this line of questioning is working OK, but I'm going to go down it. It's very difficult. And I remember when I was a professor at Wharton, that I used to say the curse of the Wharton MBA is all they want to do is sit back and analyze something, but not really get their hands dirty. And I was in a project with a or something one time. And um, one of the people said, oh, well, so uh, you know, we hired this Wharton consultant a while back. And it was the most disastrous thing we ever did, because they had a small brand that wasn't really doing tremendously very well. And all this guy did is he came in with piles and piles of analysis. And he did all these regressions and all these spreadsheets. And his advice was, cut price and lower costs. Now, lower costs, I mean, that's a fine suggestion, because I guess you can always do that. But the fact of cutting price, the thing was already wasn't doing anything at all. So the key instead was essentially the same key as Aqua Velva. Remember what we did with Aqua Velva? We tried to find those real whacked out fanatics, those champions who thought, my god, this is the greatest aftershave yet. And by seeing what they saw in it, and being able to sort of leverage that by finding similar markets, but then also very clearly underscoring those benefits that they saw, we were able, Aquavel was able to find new markets and expand their market without having to cut price and turn it into just a shell of a brand. So using this network of, uh, of attributes, consequences, and values through laddering, it's a departure from your typical in-depth interviews. Okay, in-depth interviews would just ask a bunch of things, but they wouldn't try to very clearly link up attributes to consequences to values. And the focus is on uncovering these really important implicit links. Now, the process is you, know, you want to find a quiet room, a relaxed atmosphere. How many people initially tried to do this in a very busy, distracting place? It's just a recipe for disaster. We find this also when people try to do this over the phone. It just never works out. Never, ever, 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 ever. It usually doesn't work out. Some of it work very well if somebody's got the TV on either. You want to uncover these attributes. You want to ask why, what else, why not, when different to discover higher orders. You want to map everything that has a be to a beginning and an end. 
Now, this is a very difficult thing to do the first time you do it. Now, you'll have about four or five different opportunities to do this in other contexts, mostly in contexts you choose over this next semester. And I, I guarantee you're going to get better. I think I've probably worked with maybe 2,500 or 2,700 MBA students and undergraduate students teaching them this. And every single one of them does so much better the third or fourth time they did it than the first time. They'll really start to click. And I find, though, that at this point, what's puzzling or what's difficult or what you just don't get can really just be the difference between being focused here versus being focused five degrees to the right or to the left. 